we saw the definition of a stationary distribution of irreducibility and of aperiodicity for Markov chains. And in this video, we'll take a look at some simple examples to illustrate these concepts. So first, let me make a remark here. I, when I defined aperiodicity, I only did it for irreducible Markov chains. And I did that because I was going to use a slightly different definition of aperiodicity that was simpler, but I turned out turned out actually I ended up using the general definition. And so this holds actually even for uh, Markov chains that are not irreducible. This is the same definition. Okay, so that was just a small generalization. And now let's look at some simple Markov chains. So first let's take a super simple example, maybe the simplest possible thing. We'll just take two states. So let's draw the picture here. We have state one, we have state two, and we have some transition probabilities between each possible pair. So let's choose some, some transition probabilities. Let's say it goes from one to two with probability 0.2, and one to one with probability 0.8, two to two with probability 0.2, and 2 to 1 with probability 0.8. And let's call these, just to make it a, a slightly more general, let's call this Q and this P. And so then this, this turns out to also be Q. It's not always, these are not always going to be equal, but in this case they are. And this is P. So in general, we could have any P and Q that are non-negative and sum to 1 on this simple little, little diagram here. So what's the transition matrix? Let's write down the transition matrix. I'll sort of annotate the rows and columns here so we can mentally keep track of what's going on. So the first entry is the probability of going from one to one. So that's this one. So that's P. And then this is the probability of one to two. One to two is Q. Probability of going from two to one. Two to one is P and two to two is Q. So we have our nice simple little transition matrix here. And it is a stochastic matrix as it always must be. It's non-negative and the rows sum to one. So it's a stochastic matrix. And let's think about these properties. We had, we defined these properties and, and let's see if they hold for this Markov chain. So let's first, let's think about irreducibility. Irreducibility says that for any pair of states, there exists some time for which we can get to, so if states are A and B, we can get to state B starting from state A with positive probability. So we're at state B with at time T with some positive probability starting from state A. So this condition, actually, we sort of, I sort of drew the picture here, the in intuition. And in fact, you can prove, it's not hard to prove, that this is positive if and only if there exists a path x0, x1, x2, and so on, up to xt, a sequence of states that has positive probability. So if there exists at least, so this is true if and only if there exists at least one sequence of states that has positive probability in the sense that when you multiply together the, the sequence of transition probabilities, then that product is positive. So multiply together, together the probability of going from x0 to x1 times the probability of going from x1 to x2 and so on, all, the, all those, those entries of the transition matrix. So we can check that very easily in this case. We only have two states. So to go from say one to two, well, that's, Clearly we, can, clearly we can do that with positive probability with just, just with Q as, well, that's as long as Q is positive. So in our little example here it is. And so it's irreducible as long as P and Q are strictly positive. If Q was zero, say, then we couldn't get from one to two, right? We would just be stuck here at one for infinite time. And likewise, if Q, or rather, if P was zero, then we would just be stuck at, we couldn't get from two to one. So it's irreducible under those conditions. And what about aperiodicity? 
is it aperiodic? Well, let's think about what aperiodic meant. Aperiodic was that the greatest common divisor of this set of times at which we can return to state A, starting from state A, with positive probability. The greatest common divisor of that was 1. And we said that that was equivalent to this set of times, which we called RA, being contained only in the, the set of multiples M1, only in all the, all the integers. It's always contained in M1, and if it's only contained in M1, if it's not contained in M2, M3, or any of these others, M4, and so on, then this condition is true. So one easy way to check this, a little, so here's a, a, little, a little trick that you can use to check a periodicity. A trick you can use is that if this set, RA, contains two consecutive times, like in this situation, 2, 3, then this condition is satisfied. Then the GCD is 1. And the reason for that is just that, well, you know, say, you know, if this number, if, if this, the, the first number is a multiple of k, then this one, and k is greater than 1, then this one can't be a multiple of k, and vice versa. If this one was a multiple of k, and k is greater than 1, then this one can't either. And so, therefore, if there's two consecutive times with positive that, that are both in this set, then the GCD is 1. So that's a little trick you can use. And let's check that on our little example here. So for state 1, we can if we start out at time 0 at state 1, then time 1, we can also be in state 1 with positive probability. So we can return to state 1 at these two consecutive times, or you could say 1 and 2, you know, these two consecutive times, and therefore, uh, therefore, that this, this uh, a periodicity is satisfied for this one, and the same thing for 2. You can return to 2, you know, starting at, at 2 at time 0, you can return to 2 at time 1. So these are two consecutive times that are both in that set, R2 in this case. So a periodicity is satisfied here, and so it's satisfied for all the states. And that's so that was under the assumption that, that P and Q were strictly positive. We were sort of assuming that when I was saying that. If it was not, you know, if Q was 0, then, you know, you, you couldn't uh, return to Q. And then it would not be aperiodic because the only time in this set, so if, if Q was, was 0, then you could not, so starting at 2, you could only go to 1, and you couldn't get back to to 2 because q was 0 here so you could so 0 would be the only uh, element in this set r2 and that would be contained in all of these guys so the greatest common divisor would be I, I mean it would be like infinity or something but it wouldn't be 1 certainly because every integer would of course would divide 0 Okay, so it's irreducible and aperiodic under these positivity conditions. And let's check if it has a stationary distribution. So for a stationary distribution, we need to find some, some PMF pi. Let's remind ourselves the definition. Stationary distribution is a PMF pi on, on this set of states that satisfies this property pi t equals pi, which is represented by these equations. So we just need to find this vector pi. And it turns out, it's pretty easy to check that this is satisfied. This, this equation is, is solved by the vector pq. So let's check that. If we multiply pi t here, this, this is a, we think of it, it as thinking of it as a row vector 
multiply it, then we get, you know, multiply times the first column, we get the, the P factors out, and P plus Q is 1. So we just get P multiply times the second column. We The Q factors out, P plus Q is 1 again, and we get Q. So we just get back pi, PQ, and so this identity is satisfied. So it does have a stationary distribution. So all three properties are satisfied, and therefore, for this simple example, then the, the, the ergodic theorem applies, and we get all those, those nice uh, sort of asymptotic guarantees about the behavior, the limiting behavior of, of the, uh, uh, you know, the distribution of, a random of the random variables in the Markov chain, or if you were to take the, the, the mean, sample mean of some function of the values, all those, you know, those, those guarantees that we had in the ergodic theorem. Okay, so one other thing I would like to mention here is that for aperiodicity, I told you one little trick you can use, which is if you have the two consecutive times. Another trick you can use, which turns out to be very, very handy when you have a larger set of states, is that aperiodicity only needs to be checked for one of the states when it's irreducible. So here... When we have an irreducible Markov chain, then this property holds for all states if it holds for at least one of those states. So if you can find one, you know, so if there exists some A in X for which this holds, then in fact it holds for all A in X when it's an irreducible chain. So irreducible, irreducibility gives you that nice sort of very, very, uh, very handy way to to um, more easily check a periodicity. Okay, so that was a first super simple example of a Markov chain, and next let's take a look at a little bit more interesting one. We'll look at a, few, a couple more states and get to see some more interesting behavior. But I'm going to run out of time in this video, so let me stop there, and uh, we'll come back and we'll, we'll look at some more examples.